In the 21st century, there's no escaping the cult of celebrity. This old woman in Sainsbury's turned around and said, I knew it was you. I recognised your breathing. Idolised by adoring fans. There's nothing more fun than being famous. Celebs enjoy living in the lap of luxury. I feel like my eyelashes are coming off. Oh, no, they're not. I want to find out what happens when they're stripped of the trappings of fame. I've always got a fresh mani-pedi. People might think, oh, she doesn't want to get her hands dirty, but I will. And left to fend for themselves. Is this a good idea? I don't know if I want to do this, you know. <laughs> for the next four weeks, I'm abandoning ten celebrities. 8,000 miles from home on a remote Pacific island. With just the clothes on their back. I mean, you don't know you've lived until you've shit in the sea and then swim away from it. And a few basic tools. Anthony, come on! I'm going for the big stuff. I'm going for crocodiles. They'll only eat what they can catch and kill. How is this happening when we're top left? I think I'm going to die on this island. Ah! <laughs> Quick, she's trapped. Ah! Use your knife. Pitted against the forces of nature. It's a knife injury. It looks like this is in my finger. As tropical storm season rages around them. Montana's got swimming goggles to protect her eyelashes. They've got to be protected. Going great. Oh, wow. Gnarly, dude. Welcome to the fire. <laughs> yeah! Is that a rubber Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting away. We're dead and this is a dream. Stop talking. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Do it. Pushed to the limits of human endurance. <laughs> do you think I want to be in this position? Who will have the grit and determination to survive? Yeah, let's get going. 21 days ago, I marooned 10 celebrities on a remote Pacific island. I can see the beach! Oh, Pete, paradise! Pete, thank you. Led by Pete, they quickly set up camp. Good night, you lovely people. We're losing the fire! Leave it now, leave it now! But the brutal island conditions pushed people to breaking point. Please, can you come and get me now? And three of the celebs quit. Bye, guys. Love you. There goes the drama. I can't do this anymore. Yeah! <laughs> Pescatarian Pete persuaded the group to survive just on fish. Look at that. God, it's beautiful. Mm. That's a lot of bacon. But when an unexpected visitor split the camp... My view is I don't think it needs to be eaten. We're not killing the pig. The fallout ended in tears. <laughs> and rather than eat it, they gave the pig a burial at sea. Magnificent Seven. Come on! Come on! The most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. One palava. Real palaver yesterday. A pig got a better send off than former prime ministers. <laughs> Since they found the net two weeks ago, Pete has persuaded the celebrities to survive on fish as their only source of protein. But for the past two days, they've caught nothing. Good morning, Pete. It's almost becoming um, a dictatorship here. Pete's got a massive influence over people. Now we are a pescatarian camp. With one source of food, fish, that net is our lifeline. There's loads out there, but Pete's got to catch them. My wee's the colour of honey. Mine is so much darker. Do you know what yours is there, mine? Look. Gold. <laughs> <laughs> Concerned at how the lack of food is affecting the group's health, Dr. Salia is carrying out medical checks. OK, moment of truth. Martin. So, you've gone from 210 to 181. So, how much have I lost? Two stone? Yeah. I'm starting to feel like I'm starving. Can I do your waist, Martin? Still exhausted. I think if this goes on any longer, 
the thought of why am I here? I should be at home is going to come into my head. Right, James. You're skinny, dude. You're like Tarzan on a diet. We're losing weight fast and we're hungry. You are 175. Wow. He's lost 30 pounds. Physically, I feel shit. Four or five out of 10. Generally, one of my highlights of my day is I have eight o'clock poo every morning. Yeah. And to be honest, my day's downhill from then, but <laughs> I really enjoy it. And I've had a month of nothing like that at all. People are running out of reserves. We're on our last legs. And right now, the whole camp has got to push through their exhaustion, grit and determination, and that drive to work through multiple failures is integral to survival. So it's so important at this stage that they find food and soon. Go check his next thing. Come on. Every morning at low tide, Pete and James head out to check the net for fish. Look at it. Nothing. Where should we check it again, do you think? Oh, I really don't know whatever we can. It's difficult, isn't it? Yeah. We've given it enough time to catch a couple. An absolute bump fight, isn't it? So fucked off. It's fucking stupid. There was nothing in the nets, which is a bit disappointing. So I feel a bit stressed and a bit anxious about all that, to be honest with you. The good news, Joe, is there's no cooking. The bad news is there's no fish. <laughs> nada, 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 nada. How do your legs feel? Um, my legs feel like shite, to be honest with you. Why? They feel weak. It's so weak, I don't feel like myself. You know? Two weeks ago, Martin developed cuts on his feet and legs that have now become infected. My ankles are giving me such pain. It's so frustrating. I just hope that the other guys are not kind of behind my back saying, oh, Kempi's not pulling his weight. I'm just saying, generally, I just feel like shite. Come on. Come on. Ozzy. My life at points has been really glamorous. In the 80s, Spandau Ballet. It was kind of like five boys went to Benidorm for 10 years. So it was that kind of chaos. Why am I going on the island? Coming up for 57 now. I have everything I want. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> In a funny way, it's kind of like midlife crisis. I'm testing myself. You're going to be all right while I'm away? What sort of skills would I bring to the island? <laughs> Off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. <laughs> See you later. Bye. See you later, Pete. Thanks. I have a feeling we're coming home with Yucca. Yeah. Despite the pain in his legs, Martin heads out with Dr. Salia to go hunting for yucca. After not eating for days, I can't sit around and watch everybody else do stuff. You know, I've got to be part of it. Oh, what about over there? Go around. <sighs> I don't know, I've lost my sense of where we are. We came up and then we turned right at the top, so that's, that's right. where we are. So this is where we were. OK, so let's go left. Saw, but I thought you saw something. Right. Wait, so here. That way. Are you all right? I've got no energy in my legs. Let's take a breath. There is no rush. It's so exhausted. My legs. Is it yucca? It might be so. After two hours scouring the jungle, Martin thinks he spotted something. Oh my god! Is it? I don't know. Let's wait and see. 
No, it's not that. I don't think that's right. It's just a root. Hmm. Nope. I think I'm done. God, that's no energy. Home, home, home. Ah, oh, no good. Four hour trip for nothing. Shit. Damn it. Hope we don't die here. Oh. Careful. Do yourself an injury there if that's no. it. Oh. oh. Let it pull it out. Pull it out. Ah. Oh. MP's gonna crack soon. Yeah. He's gonna sit down. Oh, fuck. What is it, Martin? You have to stop now. Just a crazy idea. Let's give you some water. I am really concerned about my feet now because the scratches and the bumps and scrapes that I've got are turning into ulcers. If it goes over a certain stage, obviously, I need to get off the island. Can anyone get me some kindling from the beach? Tiny little bits. Bastard, he's fine. Just a bastard. Suffering the after effects of yesterday's failed yucca hunt, Martin has been confined to camp. <sighs> so, nothing will catch apart from this termite mound. It's the only dry thing there is. I'm fucking struggling, to be honest with you. Yeah. I feel like I'm losing it. What am I doing, you know, sitting here? in this kind of never-ending cycle of filth in the camp and being soaking wet is shite. Nightmare. To be honest with you at the moment, I'm not quite sure why I'm here now. Why don't I just go home? You know, I want to call it a day and go home. Joe, where'd you find the limpets I'm using for bait? They're all the way down there. How, how far a walk is it, honey? About a quarter mile, half mile? Oh, why don't you just go there and you'll see snails? The islanders have been provided with basic fishing equipment. As soon as the rain clears, Eric is eager to provide a meal for the group. OK, where's a good fishing spot? Over there. Is it still there or is it rough? Oh. All the gear, no idea. That's Eric. Pete, it reminds me a little bit of the disposition of my father. Not age-wise, but just uh, always a bit angry-wise. And very disapproving. It's a group of people I've never seen before, I've never worked with, I'm, I've never heard of, and I'm here with them. And uh, you must treat everybody with the same respect you expect. Oh, this is spooky. If I fall down, I can really freaking hurt myself. Oh. 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 It's too rough. Yeah, this is crazy. This isn't working. Face. It's too rough out there for my taste to fish. It's a real waste of energy, that. Pete's a little rough with an occasional testosterone explosion. <laughs> but, you know, it's all good. They sent me straight home. and. MRI'd it and it was massive. 
With his infected feet and legs still causing him pain, Martin rests by the fire and tells the group about a much bigger test, his brain tumour. Oh, when I came out of the operation, man, I, I couldn't see out one eye, I couldn't walk on one leg. I was standing still and I, I wanted to walk over that way, I would walk over that way. Wow, dude, you were logical. But the thing that saved me, absolutely <laughs> saved me, was EastEnders. Because mm. before I went to EastEnders, I, I didn't even know if I could remember lines. Mm. And then when I turned up and I had to play, mm. I had to do um, the character of Steve Owen. Yeah, Steve Owen was so full of life. Mate, you were amazing. But he, was <laughs> so, he, was, amazing. he was so full of charisma and confidence that that kind of helped me. I hope in the coming week, you know, the, the last week, that the mood lightens a little bit. I think people, when they come and talk to me, get a chance to chill out a little bit. You have to be best friends with everyone. Otherwise, you can't survive. There's not long to go in there, and I want to see us all finish together. Right, plan. I'm going to go spearfishing. After Eric's unsuccessful fishing trip earlier, Pete is making another attempt to resolve the group's dire food situation. Crackers, you got a knife? No. Eric, you know where the, the, the knife is? I think it's in one of the knife cases. For the last three weeks, Eric has been responsible for looking after the knives in camp. Fuck's sake. What am I doing wrong, Pete? I've just asked you for it, and you don't know where it is. Somebody so borrowed it. OK, who? I don't know. Well, they, so it because make everybody borrows a knife from, uh, from so Judge listen, James. we just need to know where the knives are. OK, now. God. Sorry to make you cranky, Pete. It's not about being cranky, Eric. Stop saying that. There's a knife here. I wish Pete wasn't so condescending and cruel. It's cracky. I've tried to keep everyone as fed as possible with the nets, but it's suddenly, fuck me, I'm starving. You're not starving, you're a bit hungry. Calm the fuck down. Fucking cunts! Oh, fuck. I've got to go back. I've cut myself on a knife. Sally, huh? Cut my finger on a knife. Shit, OK. You lot all saying you're hungry. I'm hungry, mate. Okay. Such you a fucking idiot. Yeah. These things happen. Pete has had a knife injury. It's still bleeding. Is someone around to give me a hand? Concerned about the severity of Pete's cut, Dr. Salia radios my safety team. We will come and review, over. He fucking doesn't want any stitches. What happens if he needs stitches? I have to go. I'm going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We can take you for the treatment stitches yeah. and everything. Who was going to do the next? Oh. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not leaving. I need to be here. With Pete adamant he isn't going to leave the island for treatment, my medical team come up with a temporary solution. I think we should bandage it and position it Bring so that it immobilises it. We're 100% happy with it all being Fine. done here. Fine. Thank God for that. The good thing is, there's no tendon damage. I'm not worried about the finger, I'm more worried about the necks. You right? It's just annoying, mate, isn't it? Yeah. If I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it. We need to get back out there, then. Yeah. Why is he so unfriendly? We had a chat, um, and Pete said he hasn't got any achievements. He wants to show the world that he's more than just a guy who comes to us on TV. Uh. Pete's been working really hard, and I think he thinks other people aren't working as hard as him. Because that, he almost looks down his nose at people around him, that he almost ostracises himself. Pete, mate, rather than killing yourself, ask me, I'll do it. You haven't got to be the person to always do the big thing. It's fuck all, innit? Yeah. For fuck's sake.
Right. Everyone here? With the continuing failure of the net to provide food, Pete calls a meeting to reassure the group. It's not ideal. It's like a blind panic. We're never going to eat again. Uh, the nets are absolutely perfect, but there was nothing in it, which is a bit disappointing. I know we haven't got any dinner, but it's not a disaster. Pete has turned into a different person on this island. When he came on, he was funny all the time, and his mood brought everybody up. But the last week, it's kind of like no one can do anything right. Can I fish? We'll handle the fish side of things. Pete's rocking the boat. Uh, I don't think we all know how to handle him, really. And he's winding us all up. Anyone else got anything to say? Pete's got to be careful not to create divisions in the camp. It's important he doesn't isolate himself, because a team that supports each other is much more likely to thrive. Been everyone happy? Yep. Yeah! It doesn't feel like the camp is together anymore. It feels like it's kind of splitting apart. We've got to get you talking to Cockney before you go back, Eric. Hey, the boat is looking better. Why? What does that mean? Boat, boat race face. Um, your boat's looking better. slang for you. <laughs> <laughs> your boat's looking better. <laughs> oh, I fucking miss home today. I miss my mum. I really miss my dogs. I feel bad because the group is looking to me to provide food. You know, I almost get nervous every time I go to check the nets, and it's not an exact science, and uh, I get very defensive about it. Sort of underestimated that it's going to be as much of a challenge as what it is. Which way? Let's explore this side first. With the food situation in camp now critical, Joe and Anthony head out into the jungle to hunt. What's that there? That's not yucca, is it? Everything's looking like yucca for me now. No. Oh, come on. Are we lost? I won't get you lost, Josephine. The only way we will eat is if we keep looking. See anything? Look! Mangoes. The beauty! There's loads here. There's a whole little community. Let me get out of your way. Right. Oh! oh did fuck. I get you? Yeah, you did. I'll do it towards me so to get you. Have that! I've got quite a few. Right, let me collect. These big ones are great. Let's go back and do some stewing. Keep those boys happy. Come on, Joe, let's go. We got mangoes. Go, go on, Joe. And Joe. flipping stuff. Go, on, Joe. Wow, pretty great. Well done, guys. Gonna make stewed mango, man. Love it. Wow. Yeah, I'd say those are done. The mangoes will provide the group with a small but vital boost of calories. These are done. You look clean and neat, but very, very impoverished. You look exhausted. I feel a bit up. You look like you're on vacation. And uh, I look old. Oh, it smells so nice. I think everybody but Joe looks like shit. Joe has improved. Yeah. Oh, oh thank you so much. Oh, oh the smell. Oh. oh, Joe. That's so nice. It's just something sweet. Oh, it's like stewed apple. Oh, beautiful. That was just delicious. That was uh, first meal in two days. Can't tell you what a difference that makes to you. Joe, they're gorgeous. To have little stewed fruit in your bowl was just what everybody needed.
I couldn't give two shits. Tastes like potpourri. is uh, lobster. So we should build a raft. So not only you want to build a raft, you want to build a raft that catches lobster. Yeah, like, you don't aim high, do you? Thermal, Jesus. Thermal so you want a glass bottom raft so you can see the lobster. <laughs> you're, you're, really, you're raising the game yeah. here, Kempi. Energised by the mangoes that Joe found and cooked yesterday, Martin has woken up with a plan to find another food source. If we can build a raft and grab some of those lobsters, and that might lighten the mood a little bit for people. Because at the moment, we are stuck with this fish net, and that's not enough. The raft experiment, Kempi's little dream boat. Obviously, I am fish boy, fish man, fish Jedi, but by the sounds of it, there might be some langoustines or an octopus and things a little bit further out that we can't quite get to. Get down, guys. Let's do it. Oh, so those are the best bits. With the net currently failing, Martin is seizing the initiative with a plan to dive for food further out to sea. I think we should put two on this side and two on that side and then give it a test. Right. I don't know if that'll be enough. Okay, is that raft? Good luck, guys. That looks good. Let's see what happens. All right, then. First of all, let's see how high up this sits in the water. If it sinks, you're a useless prick. Yeah. We'll be fine. It's not going to sink. Fingers crossed. You can dive down. I mean, best case scenario, a couple of lobsters, seafood platter, maybe. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, we're on. You two, stand side. Don't be longer rather than shorter. What we've built here is some reef. We're going left, but we're going right. Oh, what left? I'm trying, mate. Right. Very rocky for me over this side. That's my foot, that's my foot. No feet left. How oh. dangerous is this? I'm not convinced the current's taking us there, you know. No, we're going against. As Martin's raft struggles to stay afloat, the strong current is dragging them off course. Just carry on out, right, until we hit that rock. Unable to navigate to their original destination, Martin and his crew have been forced to make a diversion and dive for food closer to shore. Oh, you I wouldn't go any closer, so these off. If we get swept from that rock, we're going to be stuck. Yeah. James, yeah. Do, you, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I'll have time to jump in there. You all right? Good luck. God, I hope we find food. What's the answer, really? Very painful, cool. So good. No lobster down there or anything. No. Uh, Come on. This is just so shit. <laughs> Nothing, Josephine. Thumbs down, I'm afraid, guys. I'd work that. We just float them out. Pete can be quite sure of his answers. He can get a bit aggy sometimes. This is tough. This is a tough experience, and everyone's working really hard. We all get grouchy. Some are maybe better at hiding it than others. Well, the net looks good, anyway. Let's hope there's something in it. 
Fingers crossed. Back at camp, Pete heads back out into the sea with James to check the net. We have fish. That's a stingray. That's a stingray. You're right with that? Yeah. It's got my finger. It's got my finger. It's got my finger. It's got my finger. Whilst checking the net with James, Peters encountered a nurse shark. Finger. Look off, give me this look, shot. You look off this. You got, got I've got the shot. Look off your fucking finger. Have you got it? I've got it, I've got it. Thank God you're all right. Never been called to a shark attack victim. It's quite painful, I'll give you, you know. Yeah. And I'm not bad with pain. Well, you've just been bitten by a shark, mate. Did you clamp and hold? Uh, no, just tickle me, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, Dan, if you lot don't say this is the best meal you've had since we've been here, I'll be raging. The fact that you've got ten fingers still yeah. and we've got a shark, I think that's, that's me, honestly. Yeah, mate. <laughs> With the celebrities on the brink of starvation, Pete's visit to the net has inadvertently provided the group with their biggest source of food so far. What a day. Yeah, I've just survived a shark. You know, has anyone got a shark attack story? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, well, I have. You know, I'm sure that story's going to come out a few times for years and years to come, and I'm sure every time it comes out, the shark's going to be a foot longer. We know how us geezers like to exaggerate the length of things and the size of things. So if you look the teeth point inwards and then serrated edges, you can, and that's what you can't get out. Bloody hell. But on a serious note, what a cool story to have. I'm absolutely over the moon based on the fact that everyone moaning about whether or not I can still provide fish. What do you fancy? You fancy a bit of a change? You had too much fish? Shark? Fancy shark? I'll give you a bit of shark. It's the heaviest fish or anything that's come out of the sea that I've ever come across. Listen, Pete was really brave. He's so stubborn. But hats off to Pete. Without him, we wouldn't have made it. What a way to wrap this whole experience up. Shark steak cut up will be lovely. The meat looks amazing. You can see the muscle. That's what it's all going to taste really good. But that was one mad mofo experience. Let's go and cook that shark up. OK. Looks amazing, Joe. I would say... That's done, isn't it? That's done. Oh, gosh, it's hot. Hot, hot, oh, hot, man. hot. Yeah. Looks like good meat, that. This, um, is it one of them free-range finger-fed shark? <laughs> <laughs> Me the shark was a meter long. Now, that's a small shark in shark measurements. That's a big shark when it's on your hand. So the whole camp was impressed. It was far out. For a vicious creature, he's tender. It was frightening. Everybody kind of grew up a little bit. And if Pete hadn't been the grown-up he is, it would have turned hysterical. It tastes like Pete's fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Pete, thank you very much for this. Pete, thanks. 
I'm pretty sure my everyone here can say that, mate, you're well more than just lads from Essex. Absolutely. Take my hat off to you. Sterling job all, all for the last three weeks, and today just, um, just you know, exemplifies that 100%. I appreciate that, big man. That means a lot, man. It's like the last week, I think, has probably been the toughest. As much as I fight with some of you, Eric, I'm very grateful to every single one of you putting up with me being a dickhead at times. I couldn't ask for, for, for six better people to be stuck on an island with. I second that. With their stomachs full, the islanders take a rare break. Magnificent Seven, we said, we're going to make it to the end. Yeah, and the Magnificent we Seven we have made it to the end. So, so well done. Whoa. When I leave here, I'm going to miss everyone. We are a proper family. And, you know, in the face of adversity, families come together. It makes me feel special because we are the only people that will understand what happened here, how bad it was, how good it was and that bonds us for life. After nearly a month, it's the celebrity's final night on the island. I want to say thank you to everybody, and I've enjoyed it so much, the experience, even though sometimes it's been really hard. And I've made you a little trinket that you oh, can all take. Yeah. Proper gifts, all not you. just one. Oh, God, Joe. What else do you do in What else time? would Joe <laughs> Wood oh. fucking do? Pick one you like. I want to be hugged. I love Thank you, babe. Oh, Joe. <laughs> Thank you, Joe, so much. I mean, I'll be honest with you, Joe, I'm probably not going to wear it for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, but I think a stone is a good way of describing what we've been yeah. solid and unbreakable, you know what I mean? Guys, I just want to say what a pleasure it is sharing this incredible once-in-a-lifetime experience with you guys. And we've ended up the family. Yeah, and, and Martin, the one thing that you know, I valued above all with, with you being here is that I think you've been the, the rock for everyone to cling to. That's my pleasure. You know, I don't have the energy, and the other guys have kind of helped me out a lot and it made me really low. But you just have to keep plugging away. One little phrase my wife said to me before I left, and I would turn that over in my head, buckle up, man up. This place is built for a mature head. And my maturity in dealing with being on the island was really important. Break open the champagne, that's what I say. <laughs> Guys, for one last time, I think it is time for bed. Do you know what we should have a group sing of? Do not sing gold. <laughs> yeah. Do not sing it. Gold. Always <laughs> believe in your soul. We got, got the, the power to know. You're indestructible. Always We're believe in. Because we are gold. Gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, who's on fire duty tonight? Oh. Oh. the remaining cast members and man this island pushes people to their limits and for those seven celebrities still here it has truly been an extraordinary experience here it comes Halfway. <laughs> the thing is, this whole experience is never about how good your survival skills are. What's interesting is seeing whether we're when we're stripped of it all, whether we have that streak of steel. And I'm so proud of you, honestly. You should be so proud of yourselves. Respect. So well done. Put out the fire, guys. Okay. 
having managed to keep the fire alight for the whole 28 days, it's now time to put it out. Well done, guys. She's out! Woo! Wow. Wow. Okay, guys, follow me. Get out of here. I can't believe we're actually going. So long, camp. Bye, now. Bye camp. Bye, Bye island. island. Oh, somebody push. Somebody push. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> It feels great to have made it to the end. At the time, it was really slow, but now, boom, it's gone. I feel really good. The reality of it was much harder work than I ever imagined. To the 11 set from heaven, salut. Salut. Sometimes it was intensely horrible, and the thought of quitting did go through my mind but I stayed to see it through. I think it's been a really important experience for me and I'm really proud of doing that. I'm hopeful of not forgetting some of the lessons I've learned here. The fundamental thing is that I don't think any of us appreciate what we have in normal life. And so I think that's something I've got to learn to do, is be thankful for the many good things and don't sweat the small stuff. I feel as humble and as tired and as accomplished as I've ever felt. It's weird, I feel very small, but very solid. Feast your eyes on that, home sweet home. I'm not even acting, that is so incredible to look at. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. Are you all right, Eric? As the islanders return to the luxuries of civilization, the first thing they are reunited with is food. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Let's do it. It's the most succulent thing I've ever tasted. No. And that's... I'm not shitting you, it's that good. Taste that watermelon. Yeah, nice and sweet. It's the one thing we haven't had on the island is, is sweetness. It's like the best thing I've ever tasted. Apart from Joe's limpet stew. <laughs> <laughs> Unable to contact their loved ones for the last 28 days, the celebrities finally phone home. Mum? Mum? Show us me. Me, do you remember me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm out. How's my favourite human being? Oh my god, I can't believe it! <laughs> Ty! I did it! I did it! She's alive! I'm alive and I did it! <sighs> Fuck off, Mr. Mom. <laughs> oh god, this is so much! It's a bit emotional. I can't tell you, I've been waiting for this moment. Gosh, it's like, you know, you hold it all in and then get that. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I'm a 30 year old man, right? But I just want to cuddle for my mum and then. The thing about the island, those that endure, those that are there at the end, you can't buy your way there. These guys have learned about friendships and about tenacity, about keeping going and about facing a few fears and being courageous in the big moments. And the truth is those values matter so much more in life than any survival skills. But when you get there, there's that glint in the eye, that spirit that knows that when push came to shove, I've got a little chorus deal. It's pretty damn impressive, and they should be really proud of themselves.